Doesn't seem as loud as it should be. Maybe I need a hole in the speaker cabinet for the sound to come out. Hey everyone, it's Tony from the Handlebar Workshops. Today we are in the garage workshop. We're going to be making a trammel. Trammel is a weird word, but what it basically is is just a way of creating a circle in a piece of wood. You could use either a jigsaw, a reciprocator saw, a saber saw, whatever you want to call this tool. You can use this. Uh, a lot of them also use hand routers. Sometimes you use the bigger routers as well. So we'll be looking at how to do it both ways. I'm going to be using this as the front baffle of the speaker cabinet. So I'm going to bring you in close so we can check out the layout. So the first thing we have to do is we have to find the center point here in order to create our circle for the big 15 inch speaker. The best way to do that is just to go corner to corner. I measured the speaker inside the house and we've got a 14 inch diameter inside of the seal. So the seal is going to be sealing on the back here. It's going to be pressed up against there so we want the hole to open up right inside. So it means we need a 7 inch radius. You can see here the 7 inches is from the metal tip from the metal tip to the end of this segment. So we'll just use that I just want to use this as a reference. I'm not going to use this as a cutting line because we'll be using a trammel in order to, to cut it out. We'll use a trammel to cut it out. Alright, so here's what we need for the trammel. You've got a piece of scrap board here. Um, we're going to use this. This is what's going to basically be what decides how big our circle is. Just a piece of scrap. And it's just about as big as the router is here. Maybe a little bit bigger. Probably want to go bigger rather than smaller. Take the plastic plate off. Because we're going to mark where that has to go here. All right? We'll mark the holes there, and then we'll attach the router however we want to here, there, whichever way we want to. So we'll do that. And then here I've got a drill that has a center finding bit. What this will do is using the plate that came off of the router this will center the bit as we drill in and you can see the drill bit coming out of the center there. You don't need this but it's very useful to have. I've got three different sizes of these and very nice to have especially when you're doing hinges and, and such. But this part right here is spring loaded here. There you go. So as you push it in, you can see it just that centers it right in there. It gets a nice positive registration. And you can just drill the hole straight through. It gives you right centered in that hole. So we'll use that to mark the screws there. And these are the screws, well, These are the screws that held that plastic plate to the to the bottom of the router. They're obviously not going to be big enough to fit through this scrap piece here. So we, I went and got some longer ones. And we will countersink the holes that these go in. And in order to do that, we've got a hole sizer. Yep, five thirty seconds. Fits right in the 532 second hole. And then we will be using nails as our pivot point in the center of the circle. And again, we will use this to find what size hole. And that's saying a 1 8 inch. And then I have to get a drill bit that'll fit whatever router bit I'm going to put in the router. This is a uh, 
Bosch Colt router. The screws that go into the bottom here are M4s. So they're, they're four millimeters. So if you're using this kind of router, that'd be some helpful information. So what I've done, mainly off camera because I forgot to hit the record button, was, um, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but I've marked the centers of the plastic plate here using a pair of calipers. You see the little lines I marked there. What I did is I marked a center line down the scrap board here. And then using the, the marks on here, all I got to do is make sure that these center lines match up with the center line on the board and that the bit can fit through the scrap board here. Following up here somewhere along this line here on the board, I will be drilling another hole where I will put a nail in through the hole into, into the board I want to cut a hole in, and then it just swings around that hole like that and it gives us a nice perfect circle. This also works with the jigsaw. Instead of having a hole here for the router bit, you would cut in with the jigsaw blade, turn it around, put the jigsaw in backwards so the blade went through that hole. Then you could use the same hole in the center there and then just guide it around the circle. Use the board to guide it around in the circle. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my best to line this cross up in the center of the hole. Make sure that these two marks are in line with the center line. And it looks like they are. I go all the way through the board. I just wanted to mark where the holes were. Now that I've got the board up off the table, I'm going to go through and countersink the hole. Now I've got a 5 30 seconds bit on here, which is the size I need for the screws to hold the router onto the trammel. There we go. We're going to hit it with a sanding block real quick because this is the side that's going to be going up against the board. It's going to be going around like this. So we need to make sure this is nice and smooth. We chose this side because this side's all chewed up and not very smooth. So rather than having to sand all that, we'll just use the side that's pretty much smooth as it is already. So there we go. Now we can just drop the screws in. What I forgot to do? I forgot to drill the hole for the bit. This is a half inch router bit. We're going to be using a three quarter inch Forstner bit to cut that hole, to drill out that hole. It'll give us a little wiggle room, so if we're not quite centered, it's okay. There we go. Perfect. See how nice that came out? There we go. There's our trammel. It's pretty much done. See, I've countersank all the screws so they're nice and flush, so they're actually below the level of the wood. They won't get caught up on anything. Got the nice hole in there. It's mostly centered. Now we just got to put our bit in and figure out our distance. All right, so now we've got the trammel almost set up. What we need to do is we need to measure our distance here. I need a diameter or a diameter of 14 inches, so I need a radius of 7 inches. We're going straight there to there. So that's going to tell me right where I need to drill my hole. Then I can come to the board I want to cut the hole into. 
All right, so here we are. We've got the nail. We've got the hole in the trammel. And we've got the hole in the center of the face of the speaker and the baffle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the nail through the piece of wood, through the trammel. We're gonna put it in the hole in the center here. Now you can see it just, just, just goes right around in a circle, just like that. I can have all the way out to the very end, that's how much space I could have. I can cut it off, I could make it look nicer and everything, but I'm just going to leave it like it is right now. One thing we need to worry about is how much the bit is sticking out of the bottom. This isn't a very powerful router, so we should bring that bit down. So there, it's not, not sticking out much, but it's just a little bit. It'll give us a good idea of where we're at and that we're hitting our circle and everything. More importantly, we need some hearing protection and some eye protection. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it on and drop this in and let the, the bit go into the wood and then we're going to spin it around the center nail. And you can see, we've started our hole. So now, we raise the bit again. And we do this over and over until we're through. I use a lot of shellac in my shop for all my shop furniture. This is just a brush that's been used with shellac. The bristles are a little stiffer, so it's good for getting sawdust out. All right, as you can see, we're more than halfway through the plywood here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use this hole and the trammel, but I'm gonna use the, the reciprocating saw to cut out from the other side. Off camera, I cut these three pieces of wood, pre-drilled the holes, and countersunk them for the screws. These longer pieces go from edge to edge of the trammel, and the little piece will go in between to hold the saw. So what we need to do first is we need to put this piece of wood on. I got some inch drywall screws. Now we put in our reciprocating saw. push it all up against this fence over here. And then we install this fence. Now what we have to do is we have to use the reciprocating saw to cut up to this line, the center line on the trammel. We want the front of the blade to be even with the center line. All right, as you can see, it's not the prettiest, but it'll work. Now 
you can see we've got the blade starting let's see if I can do this here right about where the center line is at that's where we want it we're not actually going to clamp the saw down we're going to let the weight of the saw keep it down and we just push it forward and it'll move the trammel for us So here we are again with these seven inches from here. And this whole section here is seven inches. So holding here and lining up the edge of the blade. I can mark right where I want my pivot point to be. So what we need to do is we need to drill a hole for the blade of the saw to come through. And the easiest way to do that is to use a bigger bit. And since we've already got the hole marked for us, we could easily just stick our bit in there right up against the outside wall of the circle that gives us a hole here where we could put the saw blade into and use the pivot hole in the center to pivot around And there we go. You can see the cut isn't perfect. There is a bit of a lip here. Let's see here. There you go. There is a bit of a lip there. But I can take a, a pattern bit and pattern that out. The top of the cut isn't all that great, but I'm going to pattern it out anyway with the router. And then eventually I'm just going to do a round over around the entire thing anyway and, and curve this corner in so it looks a little nicer with the speaker behind it. So yeah, that's how you create a trammel using either a router or a jigsaw. Thank you so much for watching.